Hello friends, so these days we are discussing about experimental aspects or practical aspects of air quality monitoring. So, we have uh, you know discussed about how to monitor uh, PM 10 or PM 2.5. Today we will uh, look into the sampling and analysis of sulphur dioxide or nitrogen dioxide in ambient air. So, kind of uh, you know monitoring gaseous components or gaseous compounds in the ambient air. So, this is the content list of this particular presentation. Uh, we have two parts basically the sampling and analysis of sulphur dioxide and the second is sampling and analysis of nitrogen dioxide. And both have similar content like introduction, then what are the standards of SO2 or NO2, then principle of the method that sampling method I mean, what are the instruments and equipments which are used for sampling purpose, then the reagents and chemicals which are used uh, in analysis uh, you know procedure and uh, how to calculate and ultimately the sampling you know procedure in, in terms of the flow chart which will give you at one place uh, the step by step procedure of the sampling and later on we will have a short video which will give you uh, you know kind of feeling how to handle this uh, equipment basically uh, for a particular purpose of sampling or monitoring of SO2 or NO2 and then we will conclude. So, first let us look into sampling and analysis of sulphur dioxide which is present in ambient air. As you know sources of SO2 are many like coal burning or even diesel uh, based uh, vehicular emissions and uh, it is the sampling and analysis method is basically known as improved waste and uh, geeky method for SO2 monitoring. Well, in this uh, you can see like uh, as I said there are many sources and SO2 is known for several kind of effects not only the health, but environmental effects because it can get converted into secondary aerosols or it can also acidify certain uh, environmental components. If we look into what are the prescribed standards, so like industrial, residential or rural areas. Uh, they are known for annual standard 50 microgram per cubic meter and 24 hours 80. But if we go for you know ecologically sensitive then the annual uh, average is only 20 very stringent and uh, 24 hours it is uh, same 80 microgram per cubic meter. Okay. The principle which is used for this uh, particular uh, monitoring or sampling of SO2, so basically it is based on absorption in a particular solution of uh, this potassium tetrachloro uh, chloro this uh, mercurate TCM in, in brief we call it. So, the TCM solution is used and uh, this is the uh, why this is used because it is also a particular chemical which resists the oxidation because of other uh, you know compounds like uh, ozone or NOx. So, those kind of interference it can be removed, it can remove easily. So, that way this is a good uh, procedure and it is uh, made of certain chemicals like formaldehyde and others then uh, you know at certain places or at certain steps we use different kind of reagents and chemicals and we will look into these analytical uh, like uh, balance then vacuum pump is used uh, for uh, extraction of the gases then it is passed through that uh, chemical which is in uh, impinger and uh, so it is absorbed there basically. Then ultimately spectrophotometer is used for measuring this absorbance in terms of colorimetric kind of procedure and there are need of uh, glass wears also because we need to form solutions etcetera. So, you can see different kind of reagents and chemicals which are used for this particular analysis in laboratory distilled water then mercury chloride, potassium chloride ok. You can see the whole list. So, all these chemicals reagents we need in our laboratory for this particular purpose. Then if we go for sampling procedure then first of all we have to have 30 milliliter of this uh, absorbing solution which is needed uh, in the impinger. So, that when gas this air passes through this impinger in this solution. So, SO2 get absorbed basically ok and uh, we do certain procedure we will look into uh, just later on in steps by step. I come to this calculation this is again like how much concentration of sulphur dioxide is there. So, basically uh, first of all absorbance of sample is needed ok. So, difference of the blank sample and the which is exposed right and then this uh, uh, calibration factor C f is needed which is again uh, we can uh, derive from different kind of uh, solutions. This curve is uh, based on the slope. So, concentration can be calculated when we know a particular uh, kind of concentration of this absorbance. 
then they, there is this volume of the air sampled, how much air has been you know uh, uh, passed through that solution and volume of the sample we have taken. Okay. So, V A and V S and then V T that is volume of aliquot uh, this uh, taken for analysis means in the pipette how much we are taking for particular analysis. Quality control it is the same we have done in PM 10 and PM 2.5 similarly we have to follow certain protocols so that there is no error in the monitoring or sampling. So, this is the flow chart which gives uh, how, means different steps for the measurement of sulfur dioxide like I, as I said first of all we have to place 30 milliliter of absorbing media in the impinger because this will absorb the SO2. Right. Then we have to connect it uh, in the gas sampling manifold of gas sampling device there is a particular frame where it has to connect. Then we have to draw air as a at a sampling rate of around 1 liter per minute for 4 hours or it can be 8 hours depending upon how much do we need to sample it. Then we have to check the volume of the sample at the end of the sampling and record it because it will uh, get reduced. Then we have to fill uh, some distilled uh, water I will uh, tell you later on. So, transfer this exposed samples in a storage bottle and we have to preserve it okay, properly. With the, then we need to prepare calibration graph as recommended uh, you know so that we can get the concentration after using this particular graph. Then we need to take 10 or 20 milliliter of the this aliquot of sample in 25 milliliter volume of the flask and uh, this unexposed sample is also taken as the blank. Then we need to add 1 milliliter of uh, this sulfamic acid and we keep it for 10 minutes. After that we add 2 milliliter of formaldehyde and then we add 2 milliliter of working PRA right. Then uh, we uh, you know make it up to 25 milliliter because uh, certain uh, volume reduction is there. So, we uh, you know mix with distilled water right then we keep it for 30 minutes for the reaction and uh, we set the zero of a spectrophotometer with the distilled water because we have to compare with the distilled water not with the blank. blank with distilled water and the exposed solution also with the distilled water we have to compare. So, measure the absorbance at the 560 nanometer okay, and calculate the concentration using calibration graph. Uh, we have already prepared so uh, that graph will be used. Then we calculate the concentration of sulfur dioxide using that particular equation which I just discussed you know this one. right? So, this is the way we calculate concentration of uh, SO2 which is present in ambient air. Similarly, the sampling and analysis is done for NO2 nitrogen dioxide in ambient air and the method which is used is known as modified Jacob and uh, Hossier method. right? And uh, again uh, you know it has its own characteristics and NO2 is also known for like uh, creating acid rain related problem or uh, it can have respiratory issues uh, health effects also. It also uh, you know contribute into haze formation, smoke formation also precursor for formation of the ozone. So, that way it is a problematic gaseous component in the air basically. If we look into uh, the air quality standards, national ambient air quality standards of NO2, then we can see like 4080 for industrial, residential and rural areas, 40 for annual average. 24 hours average is 80 microgram per cubic meter. It should not exceed whatever we are observe, observing, it should not exceed with these uh, you know given values, otherwise, it is a problem. And for ecological sensitive areas, it is 30 to 80. So, that means for annual uh, you know average value is less, it is stringent because uh, whole year if you are uh, inhaling uh, polluted air, then it will uh, create problems in the uh, system, our uh, body. The principle of sampling method, so again uh, this is uh, collected by bubbling air through a solution of sodium hydroxide and sodium arsenide. So, bubbles are there and then it will get absorbed basically. The concentration of nitrite ion uh, you know produced during this sampling is determined again by colorimetrically uh, method, colorimetric method and by reacting the nitrite ion with phosphoric acid and uh, all other chemicals which are listed here. Well, uh, so instruments as we know analytical balance is needed, vacuum pump is needed and absorber uh, you know in, in the impinger then capable of measuring the absorbance at 540 nanometer a spectrophotometer of that capability is needed. Blast wares are of course needed. Then other reagents and chemicals are listed here like distilled water, sodium hydroxide, 
uh, sodium arsenide and other absorbing solutions. Okay. Then uh, these are uh, additional uh, reagents and chemicals. Procedure is as I said earlier also like uh, first of all place this 30 ml of absorbing solution in the impinger and impinger is placed in the instrument where this air will pass. Basically, we do it in the same instrument where we are uh, you know uh, taking observation or sampling of uh, PM 10 or PM 2.5 we can uh, you know this particular uh, assembly we can uh, use with the that instrument also taking air uh, at a particular uh, flow. So, we replace uh, you know any water lost by evaporation during sampling by adding the distilled water uh, to make the same volume which we uh, took. Then we pipette uh, you know 10 milliliter of the collected sample into 50 milliliter of volumetric flask and do some uh, you know those laboratory uh, based uh, analysis. And uh, then calculation is done uh, as earlier as I said this AS absorbance of the sample which has been exposed absorbance of the reagent blank right. And then CF is calibration factor which we derive from the graph you know curve and then volume of uh, air sampled and volume of the sample, volume of aliquot which we have taken and then we multiply with sampling efficiency around 0.82 depending upon the sampling rate. Okay. Then quality control is the same, uh, we have to follow the protocol so that there is no error in uh, monitoring and analysis at the laboratory. So, this is the uh, you know flow chart which will give you in nutshell what is the procedure which we follow. So, place 30 ml absorbing media in the impringer, connect it to the gas sampling uh, manifold that uh, device particularly, okay. we do the gas sampling device, draw air uh, you know uh, sampling at the rate of 1 liter per meter for 4 hours or 8 hours or whatever you need to do as per the requirement. Then we check the volume of the sample at the end of the sampling and record it because it will reduce then transfer the exposed sample in a storage uh, bottle and preserve it. So, that we can take it uh, without disturbing to the laboratory. We prepare calibration graph as recommended earlier. Then we take 10 milliliter of this aliquot through the pipette and put in uh, 50 milliliter of the volume uh, flask, flask. Then we take 10 milliliter of unexposed sample as a blank in 50 milliliter volume flask. Add 1 milliliter of hydrogen peroxide. 10 milliliter of sulfonylamide and 1.4 milliliter of NEDA. All these chemicals are taken, then we make up to the mark of 50 milliliter with distilled water. Okay. Then we keep it up to 10 minutes for reaction purpose, set 0 spectrophotometer uh, with distilled water okay. and we measure the absorbance of both blank as well as the exposed solution. Right. So, we calculate the concentration using calibration graph and uh, then we calculate the concentration with the that particular equation. So, here we present a short video which will illustrate you the sampling of both sulphur dioxide and NO2 nitrogen dioxide and this video has been prepared uh, in uh, you know air pollution uh, lab of civil engineering department. So, enjoy the video. Good morning friends, I welcome you all in the experiment part of uh, our subject air pollution and control and here I am coming with the another experiment. And uh, this experiment is for measurement of SOX and NOX in the ambient air. So, in our one of the previous experiment, I have explained how to measure the PM10 in the ambient air. And for that, we use the high volume sampler. And in that, I have already explained you how the sampling of PM10 is carried out through the high volume sampler. Like the ambient air is sucked through the inlet, then it passed through the filter assembly, and then it exits from here. Now, using this instrument along with another uh, accessory. We can also measure the SOX and NOX in the ambient air. Now, in order to measure it, how we do that I will explain in today's experiment. So, basically what happens like when we start our device, so it sucks the air and then it exits from here, right. So, now what happens like here we added one attach one tube that is connected with this box that is called as an impinger box. Okay. So, what is its functioning that I will tell you. So, we connect this tube through this impinger box. So, what happens like whatever the air which is coming out through the high volume sampler that will be allowed to go into this uh, impinger box. Okay. Now, what are the different components of this impinger box is that we have the impinger train and impinger tubes okay. and uh, we have a rotameter to maintain the flow rate. Okay. So, basically what we do for measurement of socks and NOx 
we do measure it through the colorimetric analysis okay and in order to do this we uh, prepare some measurement in the lab like for uh, measurement of socks we do prepare the potassium tetrachloromercurate and for the measurement of nox we do prepare the absorbent uh, of which is prepared by the sodium hydroxide and sodium arsenide so after preparing these two absorbent we place in these uh, four tubes actually here we have two tubes for nox we have already mentioned so that while sampling we will be able to know like which impinger tube is for which absorbent so these two tubes where we have mentioned the nox here we add the uh, absorbance uh, of uh, nox okay and for uh, absorb uh, for measurement of sox we add the absorbance uh, for uh, sox in this tube and this two tube okay so we have kept here four tubes okay now how this uh, uh, the constant flow rate of 1 liter per minute is maintained in this impinger box so in order to do this we have a rotameter here through which we are able to uh, regulate our flow rate so that only 1 liter per minute of uh, air flow um, uh, can pass through these four tubes okay so how do we do it that i'll explain now so i'll just start this uh, device so you can see we have these four tubes are connected with uh, this tube so the air is coming from here then it is going with there and then this tube is connected to this tube and this tube is connected to this tube now if want to maintain the flow rate of uh, 1 liter per minute we connect this tube here and you can see you can see that flow rate is around 1 liter per minute if it is not 1 liter per minute then through the adjustment screw here we can change or we can uh, open up or close it down so that flow rate will be maintained to 1 liter per minute so now these two tubes are having flow rate of 1 liter per minute of air that is passing through this similarly for the another tube this one and this one we have this another opening so we just place here and we check that whether the flow rate is uh, 1 liter per minute or not so here it is little down so we can just adjust this uh, flow rate by opening and closing this screw So you can see this uh, marker is moving, and here we have adjusted at one liter per minute. So now the flow rate is set at the one liter per minute. Then we take out these tubes. Okay, and so that like uh, this is the procedure for uh, keeping the flow rate of one liter per minute of the air which is passing through these four uh, impinger tubes. Okay, so uh, then after what we do. we uh, as i said like we place the absorbent media in these four tubes like for nox we uh, add in this first and third tube and for socks in the second and fourth tube and after that we close the door of the impinger box and the another thing is like we have to maintain a constant temperature inside the box so it has a fan inside the box so that like what if it is heating more it has a thermostat inside so it will Uh, accordingly adjust the temperature so that right now we are having let's say temperature of uh, 28 degree centigrade inside so we can just use this up and down buttons to maintain the temperature and at the same time let's say our sampling is going on and we want to see whether everything is okay inside we just switch on this uh, light button so to we can check inside whether everything is fine or not so this is how the ambient air is passed or allowed to pass through this uh, absorbent media which is present in these four impinger tubes so generally it is carried out sampling is carried out say 4 hours in the ambient air when we are doing uh, sampling for pm10 so along with that we can attach this impinger box and we can also measure the socks and nox in the ambient air so after finishing our sampling we take out the sample from these impinger tubes and we go for the colorimetric analysis in the laboratory so here in this calculation i have explained you or i have presented here the socks and nox what are the different chemicals which has to be added like say for the socks this is our ptcm which is the absorbent we have placed inside this tube and after doing the sampling we come back to the lab and then we take out 10 ml of the sample and to this we add 1 ml sulfanic acid 
or 2 ml of para rosaline and 2 ml of formaldehyde and then we make up it to the 50 ml okay and after that we uh, take the absorbance of this uh, sample through the spectrophotometer similarly we have the blank sample in the lab which is not sampled or we say that unsampled so for that also we measure the absorbance so the difference of these two will be is represented here as as minus ab and then here we have the calibration factor that is taken from the calibration curve with the standard which we prepare in the lab so that uh, we will be able to calculate the so2 concentration and vs and va is your volume of sample and va is the volume of air sample so volume of air sample we can obtained from this high volume sampler which I have already explained in our previous experiment and then VT is the volume of aliquot. So using this formula we are able to calculate the SO2 in the ambient air in terms of microgram per meter cube. Similarly if we go to the measurement for NOx as I said like we use the absorbing media as sodium hydroxide and sodium arsenide. So when the NOx passes through this then it fixes in the form of nitrate and then we come back to the lab and we take the sample uh, like for SO2 we have taken. So we take the 10 ml of sample and then we make up it by adding 1 ml of hydrogen peroxide and then 10 ml of sulfonyl amide and NADA of 1.4 ml. So after adding this we make up the sample up to 50 ml and then we take the absorbance. Okay. So after taking the absorbance we use this formula for the NO2 concentration. Here again the AB stands for the blank absorbance which is the unsampled uh, ab absorbing media. So the difference of these two is presented here and then CF is standing for the calibration factor, VS is the volume of uh, sample and VA is the volume of air and VD is the volume of aliquot which we have taken let us say 10 ml and then 0.82 is the sampling efficiency. So using this formula we are able to calculate the NO2 into the ambient air. So this is how we do measure the SOX and NOX in the ambient air using the Impinger box. Thank you very much. We can conclude that uh, uh, both sulphur dioxide and NO2 are major pollutants in the atmosphere that is why we do you know sampling and uh, this uh, vegetation and buildings and human health can be affected by these pollutants that is why measurement and uh, uh, to compare them with the prescribed standards are needed and sampling is done as uh, we have described in this particular lecture and short video presentation has been there. So we compare uh, all these concentration with NAQS, we can uh, you know look into the problem if there is a problem, if it is uh, not exceeding the prescribed standard then it is fine. But uh, monitoring is needed so that we can know uh, whether the sulphur dioxide and uh, this NO2 are within the limits or not. So this is all for today and uh, this is the reference list which you can go through at leisure. So thank you very much for your kind attention, see you in the next lecture.